Good afternoon, my turtle ducks. Just in time for tea. Please help yourself. I've got sugar and honey and cream or lemon, and we've got jam and butter for the cookies. For today, I thought we might start talking about our behavior when out in public or at a private business. Let's start with public transportation. If you're a United States native, you may not have a lot of experience with public transportation. So if you visit a state or country where it is more prevalent, it's good to have a few basics until you can learn the specific etiquette of the place you're visiting. Let's start at the very beginning. When boarding or leaving a bus, train, or other transit, the most polite method is also the most efficient. Try to form a line either to one or both sides of the door when boarding. This will allow other passengers to disembark quickly and make it easier for everyone to board in a neat line. When disembarking, due to the common narrowness of doorways, you should attempt to form at least a loose line. Try not to push through at the same time as someone else, lest you both be slowed down or even injured by excessive pushing. Now that you're on public transit, unless it is assigned seating, you should immediately move away from the door and either to a seat or an unobtrusive standing area. As this is public transport, you want to make sure it is welcoming for others as it is for you. If you are carrying a bag, try to carry it in front of you so you are less likely to accidentally hit someone with it. If you have a bicycle, try to keep the bike against a wall and stand near the handles so no one accidentally knocks into it or trips over a wheel. You may notice that some of the seats are different colors or have little signs denoting them as specialty seating. If you do not need one of these seats, if you are capable of standing or other seats exist, try to avoid these. Additionally, while it is not required, if you are feeling lively or at the start of a leisurely day and you see someone who might benefit from one of these seats but they are full, it is kind to offer your seat to them. Let me preface by saying I am always listening to something, be it music, a book, or video essay. Rarely am I without audio distraction, thus I think it all the more important to keep track of my volume. If you are alone, particularly at home or in an area where you are unlikely to encounter others, listening to such things, having loud conversations, or even singing to yourself is perfectly fine. However, in the confined spaces of a train, bus, or other public space, it is most polite to use headphones and try to keep the volume low enough that those around you cannot hear. If you are having a conversation, try to keep the volume low. If everyone's conversations are quiet, no one will have to shout to be heard by their conversational partner. If you can avoid it, try not to talk on the phone. Try switching to text or messaging apps if you're going on public transit. Please remember that if we all keep others in mind, it will be more pleasant for everyone. And with that, let's talk about places you might be going to, such as the beach, parks, or a playground. Upon arrival, it's a good idea to stake out a spot to set up your things, and if you have a picnic or some other spread, set up. Try to keep your area contained. Keep everything pulled as close and as centralized as possible. This both looks tidier and makes keeping track of all the items you brought much easier. Remember that a pleasant presentation is not only nice to look at, but make it easy to identify that everything is where it should be as well. If you have brought food or other potentially messy things, consider also bringing a trash bag with you to keep your area tidy and to keep trash from blowing away should a trash bin not be readily available nearby. Now, while it is expected that you will be louder in an open air environment, such as a park or a playground, it is important to remember that it is still a shared space. Playing music or the radio is acceptable, but try not to let the volume be loud enough that someone a reasonable distance away could not enjoy their own music or radio. Additionally, if you have games involving teams and you see a friendly looking group of strangers, it is fine to invite them to your game if more players would make the game more enjoyable. But do not feel obligated to invite anyone and do not feel too dejected if they decline your offer. On the reverse, if someone offers you to join their game, feel free to include yourself 
or politely decline as your own plans and desires dictate. If you would like to participate, but perhaps do not feel emotionally or physically up to actually playing, you could offer to take the position of referee or scorekeeper. Now, whether offering inclusion in games, returning a wind or child strewn object, providing compliments, or offering assistance, it is important to know how to approach strangers and when not to. First, please be aware of how you look when approaching. It is a good rule of thumb that a man, particularly if he is tall or muscular, should never approach a group of ladies alone. This can, however unintentional, be quite startling and unnerving, even for a large group of envies and femmes, or even marginalized masks. If you have no smaller mask, envies, or femmes to be your party's ambassador, approach with a smile and attempt to de-emphasize your size to make yourself as non-threatening as possible. Regardless of your personal appearance, always try to get someone's attention with a friendly wave and a vocal announcement well before you enter into their temporary space. This gives any potential private conversations time to be closed before a stranger is within earshot and is a good courtesy. Always stop a polite distance, typically more than four long strides from the nearest person, unless beckoned closer. Always introduce yourself and then your intentions. For example, Hello, I'm Baba. My friends and I are planning on playing a little volleyball. Would you like to join us? Or, Hello, I'm Baba, and I think this ball might have escaped your little one. If you have children and so does the other group, it is acceptable to send the child as your ambassador, either with or without you, to invite other children to play with them. This is a good time to teach them how to approach another group as well as find new friends. There are times, however, when you should not approach another group. If you have concerns about how they are dressed, their activities, even if they fall outside the bounds of what you or I might consider polite, if they are setting up in a way you do not like, if they are not actively risking their own health and safety, leave them be. If they are truly bothering you, oftentimes you can move farther from them, but there is no reason to start a confrontation. It is almost certain to only make the situation worse and ensure they continue to behave in what you view as an objectable manner. You should only attempt any sort of confrontation or intervention if they are proving an active threat to themselves, such as setting up a grill in a dangerous manner, or you actively being hostile or aggressive. Now, regarding bringing children and pets to parks, playgrounds, and beaches, children should be kept with an eyesight and earshot. It is expected that children may be more rambunctious than adults, but there are a few basic rules of etiquette that I believe even small children can benefit from. First, be careful with playing with any toy that may be tossed, kicked, or projected. These should always be aimed away from where people have collected their things. Children should also take care to deposit any trash, whether generated or found, into the proper receptacles. Pets are another story. Unless you are in a specifically marked area, please keep all pets on leashes. It really does not matter how well trained your particular pet is. Unleashed dogs can be threatened by other, less well trained dogs, and unleashed cats can wreak havoc on local ecology. Additionally, unleashed dogs can make others uncomfortable if they have experienced poorly trained or abused animals who have become violent. It is impossible to know if a stranger's animal has been responsibly trained or not so please keep all animals reasonably restrained. Let's talk a little bit about playgrounds specifically. As adults and young adults, it can be hard to find places that may accommodate our desire to climb and slide and swing, as well as childhood playgrounds. However, there are a few rules of etiquette you should observe. Always allow space for children. Remember that you are likely to have total control over your own schedule. They often do not. If there are children, give them priority to the playground. Check all equipment for strength, especially if the playground equipment is primarily made of plastic. Wood and metal are more likely to hold the weight of an adult. 
Try not to play in a way that is overly dangerous or risky if small children are around, as they may try to model the play and without your skill or knowledge of risk, may seriously injure themselves. If older children are around, just be aware of their attention. If whatever you attempt succeeds, try to announce how lucky you were or how practiced you were. If it fails, try to comment about how much worse you could have been hurt. Some of us are very collection inclined. It's important to know what and when taking something is okay and when you should leave it. Flowers, small plants, and other native species should be left alone. Many native plants are struggling to compete against invasive non-native species. If you really like something, take a picture and see if there are any local groups, such as the botanical gardens, selling them. The only exception for this would be experienced, careful foragers. However, good foragers are careful to take only a little and are aware of the threat status of the plants they would be looking for. If you're at a beach, try to take only the nicest shells you find. Remember that sand is ultimately made of crushed shells, so damaged ones are already on their way to replace the sand. Might as well leave them to finish their job. It can take millions of years for them to be crushed completely. Regardless of place, always leave any animal you find, even snails. Unless you need to transport an injured animal to a rescue service, any wild creature you find will be happier in its home. Finally, the best way to leave is better than you found it. Make sure all trash has been gathered and won't be left on site. Particularly if there is insufficient trash bins where you are, take your trash with you. If you already have a trash bag open and you come across somebody else's trash, go ahead and toss it in. It will leave it nicer for the next time you return. Phew, that was quite a lot. So to briefly recap what we went over, be considerate of space and noise. Keep yourself and your temporary spaces tidy. Approach others only if appropriate. Keep up with children and pets. Only take what won't damage the landscape going forward. Take time to tidy up. That's a lot to remember, but small habits add up. Try to keep up with as much as possible, and we'll work together towards making our world more pleasant. Well, I think that's all the time I have for today. I should get back to work. We're not quite finished, so please come back to join me next time for part two. Until then, be kind, my turtle ducks, to others and to yourselves.